Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Damn, there was a lot of emphasis on that, and we're back. Gay for the stay. You go to prison, now you messing with another man. All right? I can't tell you how many dudes that I'd seen do that. And a large majority of them, if not, I'd say almost all of them would say, if I wasn't in prison, I wouldn't be doing this. I ain't mess with no boys on the streets. I ain't mess with another man on the street. I only do this because I'm locked up. I heard that a lot of times. A lot of different men said that out their mouth. Today, we're going to get in some gay for the stage stories. Some of the guys that I've seen getting down. Some of the guys that broke when the pressure hit and uh, took it a whole different route. Went down a different road, down a different highway. Hershey Highway. So without further ado, let's get into today's gay for the state topic. What's a dude by the name of Twigs? Weird name, right? We called Twigs Twigs. I didn't give Twigs his name. I asked him one day how he got his name. He said, well, you know, he was country as hell. I mean, like Hank Hill, Bobby Hill, like boondocks country. Like this dude wasn't from the mountains he wasn't from the woods he wasn't from the sticks as they call it this dude was out past all that he was from the twigs so they started calling dude twigs skinny ass white dude when i mean skinny like I, I, you feel bad eating around him because he just looked like he always needed an extra meal rolled his pants cuffs up really high like to where they were above his boots had looked like he had the same pair of state boots on since he got locked up, the dustiest, dirtiest ass state boots you could imagine. Kept stains on his shirt, stains on his jeans. Like like he worked in a mechanic shop or something. Didn't have a job. Didn't have a job, sorry. I get to talking to Twigs and you know, Twigs was a funny ass dude. Dude would make you laugh anytime. That dude has made me laugh to the point that my face would hurt with the stuff he would say and the stuff he would do, his mannerisms, his facial expressions. He was a funny, funny dude. He wasn't somebody that I kicked it with on a daily. He was somebody that would just come over to your cell when he was bored and would just make you laugh. Or you'd see him on the yard, he'd be doing something, talking to somebody, and you'd stop and listen to his story because he can brighten your mood, he can make you laugh, right? So let me get into Twigs. Twigs tells me he gets locked up when he's a juvenile. And I never would have guessed this about this guy. Never. If you had me guess top 10 things that he might be locked up for, this would never be a reason I thought that he would get locked up. He tells me, he says, where he lived at, he said, there was one store that was close to my house. And he said, when I mean close, you're talking over 20 minutes to drive to this store. He said, the chances were when you went to the store, if there was somebody else at this store, you knew them. He said, because there wasn't a lot of people out where I live. We lived in the sticks, out in the twigs. So I'm listening. I'm like, all right. He's like, I was a juvenile. I want to say he was 16, but he might have been 15 at the time. He said, for one reason or another, he said, a buddy of mine had started growing weed and had a whole bunch of weed. And he said, at the time, you know, things like cocaine, heroin, meth all that stuff was unheard of out where i lived he said because first of all if you moved out there with the intent of selling those type of drugs you really didn't have anybody to sell it to you probably end up doing more of it than you sold he said but pretty much everybody smoked weed he said there wasn't a lot of guys to get weed from out there and if you wanted to you might have to drive a couple hours to go get some he said so a guy i know out there starts selling weed and he said and he had given me some of it, and I just started smoking weed, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm, a, I'm, you know, this is what I'm gonna do with life. I'm 15, 16 years old, I'm gonna be a pothead, I'm gonna smoke weed. He said, well, what the problem is, is that with work out there, he said his daddy had to drive, you know, quite a ways to get to his job every day where he worked at some mill, some sawmill. He said, you know, we were country people. We had a, a just a different type of life. He said, we didn't have a lot of money daddy we didn't have no money to give nobody mama didn't have no money to give nobody 
So if I wanted to get money for this weed, I had to go get it. There wasn't really any job I could work, any work I could do to get money. Me having money was just, it wasn't something that was going to happen. So he tells me, he says, he takes his dad. He said, my dad, he said, well, that's living out there. My dad had a whole bunch of guns. My dad had hunting rifles. He had shotguns. He had pistols. He said, so I take one of my dad's pistols one day. He said, I'm, I am got it in my head, you know, that I'm going to rob somebody and I'm going to get, you know, some money to get me some weed. He goes to this little this little convenience store out in the middle of nowhere. Said he parked around the back side of the convenience store and he waited. He said, but the problem was everybody that kept pulling up to the store, I knew. Or I knew of them or they knew my dad or they knew my mom. He said, so I've been lingering around out in the parking lot for quite a while waiting for some scraggler to come through that I could rob and then run off into the night. Now you gotta remember at 15, 16, you think like you're 15, 16. He said he sees this older gentleman pull up and he's standing on the side building and the older gentleman pulls up on the side of the small building. He said he looks at him, looks down at his license plates. The guy's just passing through. The guy's not even from Virginia. He said he walks up on the dude's car, points a gun at him and tells him, you know, tell, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money. Saying I know. Boom. He said the gun goes off. I squeeze the trigger. I asked him, I said, why, why did you shoot the man? He was like, I don't know. He was like, I don't know if I even meant to. I don't know if my brain told my finger to do it before I could say, don't do it. My finger just squeezed. But he shot this man right in the chest. Didn't get the money from the man. Stood around for a minute, lingered in the parking lot, and was still there when the cops showed up. He said it felt like an eternity passed after I shot him. He said, like, the, the, the shot was so loud that it was still echoing in my ears. He said, even to this day, I can kind of still see the flash that came out the gun when I shot the man. He was arrested on the scene, arrested with the gun. The people in the store had seen him lingering around outside and told him, hey, get from around here, get from around here. 25 year sentence as a juvenile for shooting this, this man during this robbery. When he told me that it just, it didn't fit but I knew it to be true. Other people that were in prison with him had done a lot of time with him. And, you know, I checked into him. They were like, yeah, dude's a killer, man. He, he, you know, shot somebody as a teenager. Yeah, he's young buck's been in the system. You know, he's been in the system a while now. And at this point, he was probably pushing 30 years old. I would say somewhere between 28 and 30 years old is, is my best or my remembrance, right? We get on the subject one day. Dude comes in the pod. And dude is openly gay. Like there's, you know, some dudes you might be like, mm, that dude might be gay. And there's some dudes that as soon as you see him, you're like, he's gay. This guy walks in the pod and this guy, you know, does his best to mimic a female. He's got his eyebrows lined up. His clothes are tight on him. He's got the walk, you know, that some of these guys have. Everything about him screams, hey, look at me, I'm gay. This guy walks in, this new guy walks in, and he's got his stuff, and he goes to the control booth, and they tell him what cell he's gonna be going into. And I'm standing there talking to a couple dudes, right? We're just bullshitting, doing what we do, killing time. And I happen to look over, and I see the dude. I see him come in, and old Twigs is standing there, locked in on him. Like, like Twigs is looking like, you know what I mean? Like a bowl of ice cream just walked across the pod. A little bit later in that day, Tweez comes up, Tweez says, y'all see the new guy that came in? I said, yeah, everybody seen him. How could you miss him? He was like, man, this is the first time I ever knew of Twigs liking boys, knew that Twigs had any gay tendencies or anything. So when he said, man, I said, man, what? I said, what, you like that? And he was like, yeah, hell yeah. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> like thinking to myself like, this is crazy. Twigs could have been a stand-up comedian, but never in a million years would I guess that Twigs liked the boys, right? I said, Twigs, you mess with the boys. He was like, hell yeah, I mess with the boys. What you think? You know how long I've been locked up? I said, come on, Twigs. He was like, man, you're tripping. I got locked up. I was just a juvenile. He said, there wasn't no girls out where I lived at. You know, so what you think? As soon as he said that, it dawned on me. Twigs was a virgin. Twigs got locked up a virgin. I said, Twigs, you ain't never been with a woman? Hell no. 
I got locked up. I didn't even know. The most I might be is in my bedroom on some, looking at a magazine or watching some porno or something. He said, no, I was just a, a youngin' when I got locked up. I had not never been with a woman. I said, oh, man, this is too much. Twigs, you're a virgin. Hell, no, I'm not no virgin. I said, you ain't never been with a woman. You a virgin. I ain't never been with a woman, but I've been with a boy. I said, oh, my God, this is too much, man. Why is this? What about, why, God, why, 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 why have you, why, Jay, why? He goes on to tell me, he said, no, nah. he said, I ain't never been nobody's boy. I ain't never been the female in the relationship. He said, but I've been the man time and time again. Hell yeah, what you think? I'm going to do 25 years. I got locked up 15, 16 years old. All my hormones raging like that. And that I ain't never messed with a boy. Hell yeah, I mess with the boys. I said, Twigs, I done seen you running around this prison for the last year, and I ain't never, ever known that you mess with a boy. I seen you mess with a boy. He was like, oh, hell yeah. A lot of boys, man. I said, oh, man. This is, like I said, this is, this is too much. He goes on to tell me, he said, I ain't never been with a woman. I ain't never been with a girl. He said, I lost my virginity to a boy. I said, when did you realize that you like boys? Like, he was like, no sooner than I got to prison. He said, they put a boy in the cell with me, and, you know, tch, that's what it was. I did it, I liked it, and I continue to do it. The problem with Twigs is, if you're an openly gay man, and you come to prison, you're going to want to be with somebody that can protect you. You're going to want to be with somebody that, if, if, say, Big Bubble pushes up on you, whoever pushes up on you, y'all all heard the, the myths of Big Bubble. Well, there's a, a Big Bubble in every prison. Maybe not going by that name, but there is a treetop, there is a jingling, there is one of these dudes, there's a dog in every single prison. He was like, you know, it's hard for me to get a boy because, you know, they want somebody to take care of him, somebody's going to fight for him, and I ain't really with all that. He said, but every now and then I come across a boy that, you know, is cool with being with me, and I, I do what I can, but they eventually leave me because I can't protect them when they get with somebody bigger and stronger. Twigs went on to tell me, I said, so when you get out, you're going, you're going to mess with boys, man. He said, no, nah, the hell no. I'm only messing with the boys because there ain't no women, because there ain't no girls, because that's all I've ever known. Up Greensville, dude by the name of Radar. Anybody that's, that was up Greensville when I was up there in between, let's say, 2005, probably a good chance Radar is still there. Up until current. I don't know if he's ever been shipped. I left there in 2012. Into 2012. Radar. Radar was a cool ass dude, man. Black dude, bald head. I'd say early 40s. Athletic but skinny at the same time. You know that skinny athletic build? Like somebody looks skinny until they take the shirt off then when they take the shirt off it's like damn dude he's ripped up like that was him he was like a gi joe with his shirt on but then when he took it off he was like you know like dude was cut up i lived in seven building radar lived down in nine building radar worked maintenance with me right radar was nice with them tools radar knew the ins and he knew the ins and outs of prison been locked up a very long time Radar had a life sentence. Radar was a killer. 100% would murder you. Radar was a cool dude, laid back, very calm. He would laugh and joke. But if you wanted to push it, you wanted to have a problem, he was quick to give it to you. All those hee hee ha ha smiling and being cool would go right out the radar, you know, right out the window. It would go off the radar. And Radar would, you know, bring the knives into play. He was in prison when prison was still prison. When if you were gay, it was most likely by force. Radar been around a very long time. His name rung bells. <coughs> Pause. And Radar put in his work over the years. Radar had several scars on him. Radar had a, had a decent scar on the side of his neck where he had been cut one time. But like I said, I worked maintenance with Radar. We didn't live in the same pod. We didn't live in the same building. We didn't walk the same yard. So outside of work, 
I didn't know a whole lot about radar. I just knew what I had heard. I just knew what other guys that worked in maintenance with me said, and they would tell me about how we got down. And, you know, nobody ever told me that radar was gay. There are some things you can say about a man that if it makes it back to him, he's not going to take offense to. Saying, dude's a hitter, dude will stab you. If that makes its way back to radar, radar ain't going to be mad because somebody said, hey, he's thorough. He'll push that knife. He'll fist fight. He'll punch you in your face. <laughs> Go out your way to tell the next man that, hey, Radar likes them boys. Radar is gay. Radar got a boy down in the building. That could be something Radar could take offense to and be like, why are you speaking on, you know what I mean, what I do with my personal life? That might be something to get you punched in your face. Might be something to get you stabbed. Might get you uh, in a real bad situation real fast, right? I worked side by side with Radar for a long time, quite a while. No one had ever brung up the topic. Everything comes to light one day. We get a bunch of new intakes, a bunch of guys that are fresh, straight from, from receiving, from reception. Just hit the main line, just hit the, the big yard, the big time, the big house. These guys had just showed up. Well, our maintenance shop is situated in this hallway across from all the buildings we live in. There's a building across from it. You got your child hall, you got your gym, you got visitation, you got school, you got the maintenance shop. You got the warehouse, you got main laundry, you got the, you know, the trash compactor and the loading docks. You got all these different stuff attached to this big, long building. And in front of it sits our three buildings and these two major rec yards, right? So when you come for personal property and you first get to the prison I'm at, you have to, this door opens. As soon as this door opens, the first thing you see is the door in front of you. And that's the maintenance shop. And then you have to go down this hallway, go through this other hallway and this metal detector and once you come out that door boom it opens up to three different buildings one of these buildings you're going to live in you look to your left you see a huge rec yard look down further that way you see the last building and a huge rec yard i hear the door click clank and we'd always look up when you hear the door open because it's either going to be somebody you know coming through that door it's going to be an officer or it's going to be new intakes on this day, it's new wind takes. I'm sitting there working on the buff and radar is talking about something and you hear shklank and I look up and I see the new wind takes come, th you know, come through this door and the first thing they're gonna see if that door is open is you. I'm sitting on the bucket, the first thing these guys see is me and radar sitting there working on things, right? So we look up at them, a couple other dudes that are working in the main shop look up at them and we're looking to see if any of the new guys coming in, we know who's coming in, who just hit the yard, is the killer? Is it a, you know what I mean? Any gorillas in the pile? Gorillas meaning just big jacked up, you know what I mean? Possible booty bandits or whatever. You're looking because you don't see a lot of new faces. We look up, my third or fourth dude comes through, and I look, and it's a boy. It ain't no, it's a, it's no denying it, it's a boy. We're looking, and radar, boom, sees the boy, and radar jumps up off his bucket, takes off across the maintenance shop. And is looking out the door like Beyonce just walked down the hallway. Like that's Rihanna or, you know what I mean? Whoever you 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 think to be the, the baddest chick, Radar is like, oh shit. And he's at the door talking about some, hey, hey, come here, girl, let me holler at you. Hey, girl, come here. Come, don't be shy, my name's Radar. And I'm sitting there like, in complete disbelief. I'm not believing that Radar's at the door and my boss, um, Ken, he's sitting there at the time like, <laughs> you know, this is a man that's got a wife at home that doesn't experience a whole lot of what goes on behind the scenes in prison. Been working side by side with Radar for the longest time. And Ken is like, you see him sitting at his desk at his computer looking over like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Like, is Radar doing what I think he's doing? So I get up and I walk over to the door. I'm thinking... I know in my mind that Radar is trying to holler at this boy, but I need to take another look just to make sure that there's not a female CEO, a counselor, any female in this hallway before I 100% go ahead and say, okay, Radar is gay. I walk over to Radar and I'm like, what up, Radar? And I look out the door and I'm like, oh, shit. Damn it. Ain't no females out there. 
And the boys just turned back and just looked at Radar. Radar was looking at him, and the boy just smiles and walks off, right? Now I know. Well, here's the thing. The boy is going to the building that Radar lives in. Now I'm building at the time when you come in, you go into 200 pod. 200 pod is the new intake pod. Everybody starts off in 200 pod. Radar lives in 200 pod. You got some guys that just come through 200. They process them in. A couple weeks, they go to the pod in the building they're going to live in. This boy ends up in Radar's pod, right? Radar always stayed fresh. When I mean fresh, like Radar had these glasses, these seeing glasses that were damn near like Cartier frames. Like, I don't know where he got these frames from, but you run across stuff like that in, in prison. You're going to come across jewelry. I've seen dudes with big chains. You're going to come across, you know, watches, rings, glasses, shoes, boots. Radar comes to work the following day, and he has got a pep in his step. He's used, like I said, dude stayed fresh, man. His clothes would always be iron. He wouldn't wear no dingy T-shirts. His blue shirts that he wore, you know, he would order the Levi shirts off the commissary and the Levi jeans, and he had the, you know, pro Timberlands on. He didn't wear that state stuff, right? Radar comes to work the next day, and you could tell, like, Radar went a little above and beyond getting fresh than he, had, than he usually does, right? And Radar standing there, and I told y'all about Dog with the Stacy situation. Dog was Radar's homeboy. Dog, he's telling Dog, he's like, man, the bitch they brung in yesterday is in my pod. He's like, I'm down on him, man. Huh? Comes in and he's telling Dog more and more, and you know, he's staying fresh. Radar comes in one day, and we're sitting there, and we're getting ready to go out for the day to our different parts of the prison to work. And Radar's fists are all messed up, like. He ain't got no marks on his face, but you can look at his hands, and his hands look like pig feet, like pig knuckles. Like Radar's and got into it with somebody, right? So dog says, yo, man, what's up with your hands, man? He's like, oh, this shit ain't nothing, man. That shit was easy. That shit was light work. He's like, where? What happened? Why? Radar's like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm good. He's like, well, I fucking thought that while I was at work yesterday, he was gonna go over there and try to holler at the boy, and that uh, old Radar wasn't gonna do nothing about it. There's another dude in the pod that likes the boys also that's pretty much got a lot of the similar views that Radar does. It's been down a long time. Works over an enterprise. His permanent bed and cell is in that pod. There was maybe 20 guys out of 86 in that pod that were permanent in that pod. Said he comes back in from work and he, you know, he said immediately I go over to the boys' cell and I'm like, what's up? How was your day? Blah, 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 blah. Chopping it up like a dude would with a female, right? He says, I'm good. He says, but dude keeps trying to press up on me. Like, if we're going to talk, you need to do something about that. Radar goes straight into radar mode. Zooms in on the who. Who tried it? He knows who it is, but he's got the boy. He's got to say it. Radar said, I had a good idea who it was. I'd seen him looking at the boy. And he should have known when he seen me over here. This is off limits, right? Radar said, I go up to the cell and I, tell, you know, tell the way you need to you need to back up, man. Don't be trying to holler at the boy. We're going to have problems. You already know, man. Like, that's mine. He done put a label, it's mine, on the boy, right? I guess two and two don't make four. They're not agreeing on the on the same thing. And dude is pretty much telling him, you know, look, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a grown man. You don't tell me what to do. Radar goes up in the cell, gives him the business, beats his ass. And I know he messed dude up because from the way his hands look, he couldn't, your, your face couldn't sustain those fists and the amount of damage he had on his hands without your face being messed up, right? So I'm listening to this. I'm like, damn, he is fighting over this boy, right? So me and Radar, we end up working in the basement one day of the building I live in. And they've got these, it's almost like a, it's, it's a well pretty much, but it's not a well. It's just a pump down in this deep hole in the basement that pumps the water to the buildings. That pump had went out. And I done got the pump fixed. Now we're sitting there working on some other stuff in the basement. And me and Radar get to talking. And Radar is not somebody you just want to come out the side of your neck sideways at. Because Radar hit your, hit your ass in the face with one of them hammers laying on that maintenance cart. Stab you in the chest or the neck with one of them screwdrivers. If you you know, you know push him the wrong way. He's not a, a play pretend killer, a Fisher Price killer. A dude that shoots into a crowd and kills somebody. Radar is a true indie killer. He is doing life for a reason because 
he has killed somebody. He intentionally killed them. He ain't, you know, don't feel bad about killing them. Killing is in his blood. So Radar is like, yo, man, so uh, we just get to chopping it up on some bullshit. Radar goes into the whole talking about the boy thing. And I said, look, man, Radar, I'm not, I said, I ain't trying to rub you the wrong way or come off disrespectful. I said, yo, but you know, I don't really, I don't mess with no boys, man. I don't know, you know, I don't get down with the boy shit. I said, I ain't trying to tell you you can't talk or what you can talk about. I'm just telling you that, like, that that's not a conversation for us to have because it's really not. That ain't my drop, man. That ain't my cup of tea, right? Wait, I said, so you want me to tell me you've been locked up all these years and you ain't never thought about messing with a boy? I said, nah, Radar, right, I ain't never thought about messing with a boy. He said, well, let me tell you something. It's a whole different situation when you got a life sentence. He's like, when I got life, man, he's like, yeah, I done hollered at some females along the way. You know, I done, I done bagged me a couple females. He's like, but in messing with the boys, like, that's my thing. That's my thing. That's what I like to do. He said, shit, I'll still holler at a female if the opportunity presents itself. So Radar was definitely one of the dudes that pretty much promoted the gay for the state. I'm doing life, and this is the only option I got. So this is what I'm gonna do. Me and Ray deaded that. Me and Radar deaded that situation, that uh, that conversation. I moved on to something else. He ain't never. He would still be like, "Damn, girl," when he seen a boy or something. I seen him do that a whole bunch of times after that. But it wasn't something that you know we ever talked about again. Like I said, you can you can attract flies with honey, and you can attract flies with shit. Meaning you can address the situation in an aggressively aggressive way. Or you can you know, address the situation in a way that doesn't have to be aggressive and still attract the same thing. I just kind of told him, look, not a conversation I'm really trying to have, man. It's not my thing, right? Let him know that what you're talking about with the boys and all kind of makes me feel uneasy, man. It all goes back to the tomato theory I just gave y'all. This is the God's honest truth. I like tomato sauce, tomato paste, ketchup. I don't have a problem with that. If you were to lock me in a room full of tomatoes, today and that was the only thing I had to eat you would come back in a couple weeks and I would be laying in a room full of tomatoes and I would be dead and it's by far one of the craziest environments one of the craziest worlds you could ever find yourself in you do enough time in prison and you are probably and most likely going to run across radars you're going to run across twigs you're going to run across strawberries you're going to run across Travis Potts you're going to run across all these different guys, reds, you know, that exist. It's a world that television and movies will never do no justice. I've yet to ever see a movie that could truly capture what it's like to be in prison, the demeanor guys have, the different type of guys you're going to deal with. I've yet to ever see a show or a movie that could capture it. I do my best to paint the picture for you. But in reality, I'm not doing it any justice. It's something I never want you to experience. For you guys that have experienced, it's something I never want you to return to. And I do my best to give it to you the way it really is. Now, with all that being said, I don't want anybody to think that with today's stories, that all the guys that got life sentences or have a long amount of time to do in prison are gay. Because that's not the case. I know men that have been in prison 30, 40 years and more that to this day have never went down that route, that have never, ever messed with another man. I hate the stereotype, the misconception, and the lie that's told when they say, oh man, them dudes all in there just humping around, jumping around, messing with each other. Not the case. It's not. I would say... If you had to put it into numbers, maybe one out of 50. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good number. Man. One out of 50 is, I know guys that are never coming home that if they don't mess with a guard or a counselor or find a way to do it in the visiting room, will never have sexual contact with another human being. And for those that decide to, like I said, that's your life. You live your life how you want to. Do what you feel is best. For me, 
like I said, I would die an old man and I would pull on this son bitch until it pops off in my hand or stops working. Just not my thing. But if that is your thing, who am I to tell you what to do with your life? Gay for the stay. Crazy topic. But anyway, these institutions, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? This is Jay Williams. Let's live life. To all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.